Hi, I'm Luke, and this is my experience with Lauder's Disorder Surgery. I'm getting the surgery because about eight or nine months ago in October, I dislocated my shoulder four times playing rugby, and um, after multiple tests, exams, x-rays, MRIs, doctor's appointments, I realized that I wanted to play ever again, um, be able to play properly ever again, and if I ever wanted to be the player I once was, I had to get surgery. Um, so a little backstory about my shoulder. Um, I'm a prop, and during a game, I dislocated it. Uh, well, I, it was dislocated while I was being tackled. I was carrying the ball and I got tackled. I remember exactly what happened or whose fault it was, but then as I rolled over, it came back in. So I kept playing, and then it came out again, and I, and I put it back in, and I kept playing again. So it was three dislocations, then it came out, and then I was like, I'll take the rest of the game out. Two weeks of physical therapy, and then after that, I decided to start trying another game. Um, and with a brace on this time, like a neoprene sleeve, basically they hold the shoulder in place. So I wore the neoprene sleeve and after the first probably 25 minutes, it dislocated again. I stopped playing for the season um, and decided to get an x-ray. Once the x-ray revealed I hadn't broken anything major, like no, well, no bone damage basically, I decided to get an MRI. I wanted to get an MRI so I could specifically see what was wrong with my shoulder. Yeah. The MRI revealed I had a pretty torn labrum. Now because my, my dislocations were down and not forward or back, um, the tear was fairly small, um, but it still was significant and it kept happening and happening. So I decided to look into different procedures and different types of surgery. Um, the doctor who I saw in the States um, recommended two different procedures. He recommended two procedures, arthroscopic surgery and lateral air procedure, which is what I ended up getting. After meeting with him, I realized that those two procedures would help me stabilize the shoulder and through rehab and physical therapy would make my shoulder stronger and able to, would allow me to play again, basically. When I got back to France, which is where I had my operation, I met with the orthopedic surgeon. We discussed the fact that I wanted to go back into a contact sport, that I needed good support as well as flexibility and mobility. We talked about my goals, what I wanted to do after the surgery. Uh, we also talked about um, how the, well, the best way to stabilize it would be just from a medical standpoint while looking at my MRIs. Um, and he ended up going for the lateral air procedure. So we ended up, so I ended up choosing that one. Because I was leaving France to go back to college, I had to have the surgery basically as soon as possible. So I scheduled it for like 10 days later, which is not a lot of time. Um, during those 10 days, I had to, first of all, speak with my family, my mother, my father, my girlfriend, see if they thought it was a good idea, um, see what they, what they thought about just the idea and get surgery overall. It was my first actual surgery and my first general anesthesia, so I was a, we were a little nervous for the, about that. Uh, but then that time I also had to meet the anesthesiologist and then I had to do blood work, so I had three blood exams to give in. Um, I also had to buy some medication, pain medication, and inflammatories, and I also had to go buy the brace that I'm wearing right now. Um, and then there's two other people that I talked to afterwards. Um, those two people were a friend of my mom's, who had the exact same procedure done to him 20 or so years ago. Although it's been 20 years, he did have some very good advice. Like the fact that um, this is one of the most painful surgeries he's ever had. And he's had quite a few on his legs for random reasons. Um, but so he told me that he basically warned me that it was very, very painful. So now that I knew that, I went into it, not necessarily more relieved, but at least more aware. And that was really important to know because although I didn't find it that painful, I think that without the painkillers I had, it would have hurt a lot more. The other person I wanted to meet with was my osteopath. Not only had he been working with me for a while, but also he worked professionally um, with the French national rugby team as well as the Paris club rugby team. So I really trusted that his knowledge about rugby and rugby related injuries would be like the best I could find. Um, and once I, as I spoke to him, he looked at my shoulder, he examined me once more. We had already met last, uh, last December, but he examined me once more. Um, and he told me that he knew at least two players that he could think of that had had the same procedure and were still playing professionally. So that really reassured me. Um, and then I went into it. Um, one thing that kind of disappointed me was that there really wasn't much online information about the procedure. Well, don't get me wrong. There was a lot about the procedure itself, a lot of research about the procedure, about procedure regarding rugby as well. But there wasn't much about people's experiences with the procedure itself. Luckily, I knew someone who had had the procedure done to him, although a while ago, it still like, helped to know that someone else I knew had done it, and that it worked that he's healthy now. So that's why I'm doing this in part is because I feel like people, it's really helpful to see what other people go through before going through the same thing. 
<laughs> Tuesday morning, I went in at 1 p.m. Um, I got ready, wore my very fancy um, hospital clothes, and then ended up going to the, uh, went down to, for surgery at uh, 5 p.m., I think. Yeah, 5 p.m. Um, was out by 9.30. I was back in my room. Although the procedure was only less than an hour, waking up takes the most time because it is general anesthesia. One of the most disturbing things I will say was waking up um, and, and throughout the night, whenever I'd wake up during the night, I realized that my hand, I had no, my arm and hand, couldn't, I couldn't move them at all and I had no feeling. That was a little weird, a little disturbing at first, but then your hand slowly gets feeling back and then it's totally fine. It just it feels a little weird to not be able to feel your hands when you touch it um, because of the numbing agent and the relaxing agents taken for the surgery. The next day I was up by 11 a.m. and I've had the bracelet ever since. It's been six days and I still haven't been able to take it off or haven't been allowed to take it off. I'm meeting with my surgeon tomorrow for the one week checkup. He's gonna look at the scar, just check it, make sure everything's okay. Um, probably gonna redo the bandage because this has been there for a week. Um, also, hopefully will allow me to take the brace off at least to shower, which has been really hard. Um, yeah, also other thing, if you're doing this, you can't really do much with just one arm. It's not like a cast, you can still like put a bag over it and shower. You really can't move your arm at all and it covers your whole chest. Um, so it's really hard to shower your upper body. Luckily my girlfriend's been helping me a lot, but it's like there's things like that you think are you're gonna be able to do that you really can't do. Um, so be ready for that. But yeah, hopefully I can start taking it off periodically as of tomorrow, and um, we'll see what he says. Another really inconvenient thing is sleeping. I've had to sleep on my couch um, because I have to sleep not completely 90 degrees, but I had to sleep reclined and not all the way down with a pillow underneath my elbow to keep my shoulder as flat as possible. Um, really the goal is to make it move as little as possible so that everything's time to heal up inside the shoulder. Um, about sleeping, sleep was interesting. Um, I wasn't really able to sleep for the first two nights more than three hours at a time. Uh, for the first two days, I took painkillers regularly and my, as well as my inflammatories during meals. Uh, after that, so days two, three and four, which were Saturday and Sunday, I was able to move to only two a day, one when I woke up and one before bed, just to make sure I would sleep through the night or I'd be fine all day not for any other reason. And then today, it's Monday, it's been six days, uh, five days, day five, I guess, since I got out of the hospital and I've been perfectly fine, haven't taken any painkillers, no pain really. I'm, taking, I'm just still taking my anti-inflammatories with meals, uh, but that's it. Besides that, I feel perfectly fine. Although I haven't taken any, so I'm just taking my anti-inflammatories with meals. I'm not like, I'm not 100% healed and it's still like a dull pain, but it's more like a sore than anything. It's, just, it's not like shooting pain, it's not like really painful. Just like, I know it's there. And I was walking in the street earlier and someone bumped into me, that hurt. But besides that, it's really been fine. Um, yeah, so this is, I guess, week one. Uh, hopefully, I start physical therapy within the next week or so. Um, Cause that's supposed to take a while. And uh, yeah, we'll see how, how it goes. Thanks for following me through this experience and uh, I'll keep you up to date on what happens with the shoulder, with physical therapy and all that.